just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And we we in slow season. So when it's slow season, uh, this is when we start to notice a lot of these top 10 lists uh, start to roll out. And I ain't got no problem with it. I always like looking at people's top 10 lists. I do not like making my own, y'all know that. I hate when we get asked questions, who's your top five this, who's your top five that, who's your top ten this, who's your... I, I don't like that at all. That's not my thing. Um, but if you send me a list, I will look at it and we'll go over it. And, and this was no different because PFF, who some of us are friends with, some of us are, are enemies with, and then there's some people in the, in the middle who are like, all right, it is what it is. Uh, but PFF, they produced a list of the top 10 secondaries uh, going into NFL season 2022. Um, and the list is as follows. Uh, number 10, the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, number nine, the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, number eight is the, uh, ooh, almost said San Diego Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers. I believe that, yeah, they're Los Angeles it's the Raiders who are Las Vegas. So yeah, the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm still not used to saying that. Uh, number seven is the New Orleans Saints. Who that? Uh, number six is the Buffalo Bills. Number five, ooh, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, number four, the Green Bay Packers. Number three, the Cleveland Browns. Okay, number two, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And number one. Number one. Number one is those Baltimore Ravens. And when you think of, like, really think about it, really think about it, you, even as a Ravens fan, whether you're biased or not, whether you got on a pair of purple shades or not, whether you got on a pair of purple camo pants or not, um, you, you cannot really be like, oh man, what kind of list is that? And not even just because the Ravens are number one in the top 10 list but simply because the Ravens secondary right now is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. You think about the starters that they have, you think about the depth pieces that they have, you think about all of it and you think about, wow, this thing could be something. Because you look at the cornerbacks, the two outside cornerbacks, uh, Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. So when you think about that alone, it's like, ooh, that, that, that could be a beautiful thing. And then on top of that, they ended up, they signed Kyle Fuller. And it's like, ooh, okay now, I like that. And then on top of that, you still have Brandon Stevens, you have Vardarius Washington, and he, he still got to prove himself, because he's still unproven in the NFL so far. But you do have Brandon Stevens, and he's shown that he can play. He can play in this league, and he, he can play in multiple positions in this league. And we're going to talk about him in a little bit. But your cornerbacks, it's like, okay, it's looking pretty good. You got Jalen, who they just drafted. You got Pepe, who they just drafted. And those guys, they still got to prove themselves, too. But when you look at the top four guys who are cornerbacks, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, uh, Kyle Fuller, right there, hey, three guys with starting experience. But then Brandon... Uh, now his name, oh, Brandon Stevens. His name was slipping my mind. But now he's somebody that you can throw in there too that has starting experience. So he ain't just no rookie no more. He, he's been out on that field a lot and played in several different roles. And it's expected that he continues to do that. So then you're like, all right, secondary looking straight. They got some unproven guys. They got a couple of unproven guys, like two rookies, a second year guy, but then in front of them, they got a bunch of proven guys. Guys with experience. But then you look behind them at the safety position, and it's like, wow. That's not only just a lot of depth, but a lot of quality depth. You start at safeties, you look at Chuck Clark. And again, hopefully the Ravens keep him. Still, hey, we don't, we're gonna see what happens, we don't know. Hopefully they keep him so they can continue to have that much more quality depth. But you got Chuck Clark, Starting experience, box safety, he'll drop back sometimes, but his specialty is staying around the line of scrimmage. 
Um, he's the one that's been calling the plays. He done had the green dot uh, for the past couple of years now. Uh, and we'll see if that changes with this new defense. But you got Chuck Clark. Then you also have newly signed Marcus Williams. And this is probably the best safety that you've had, the best true free safety that you've had since Earl Thomas. And then even before then, um, man, before then, I know there was Eric Weddle. Uh, I feel like Earl Thomas was better than Eric Weddle. I know er Eric Weddle was more of a people person. He was more friendly and what, but I feel like Earl Thomas was better just be because of his ability. Um, a lot of, I, I know all the, all the crazy stuff. Just we, we just talking on the football field. And that's it. Strictly on the football field. Earl Thomas was nice. He was nice. Now he did run his mouth a little bit too much sometimes, and then sometimes, hey, they backed it up. Other times with the whole old oh, man, my my hamstring. I didn't want to pull my hamstring again chasing Nick Chubb. Oh man, hey, people can't be scared. What they? What do you say? People can't be scared to hit their Kenny, whatever it was, and then. <laughs> Yeah, that part. Uh, but anyway, um, Earl Thomas, uh, well, Marcus Williams, in my opinion, is the best safety signing since Earl Thomas. And I think Earl Thomas was the best safety that the Ravens had since Ed Reed. Now, I'm not saying that he is Ed Reed or even close to Ed Reed. I'm not saying that. But, yeah, I don't think like with Ed Reed, I always say this, that with what he, he he spoiled Ravens and spoiled Ravens fans because every free safety that the Ravens bring on, draft, sign, whatever, they will forever be compared to him. Him and Ray Lewis, they just spoiled the Ravens at those positions like crazy. Terrell Suggs as well, loading, I mean, we can go down the list, but especially, like y'all know, y'all know whenever there's a safety for the Ravens, people always think, oh, Airy. You think, oh, how does this guy compare to Ed Reed? Even if you don't want to do it, you think about it. Same thing with inside linebacker. Man, how does this guy stack up to Ray Lewis? Even if you don't want to, you think about it. But anyway, Marcus Williams, a true free safety, a Roman safety, a backfield, center field safety, they got one. So that's looking good. Then they were like, you know what? Dipping that safety was so nice that we want to do it twice. Then they went and drafted uh, Kyle Hamilton. It was the best safety in this draft, by far. It's not even close. So they did that, and then, but even before they even before the draft, they brought back Geno Stone. So he's on his third stint with the Ravens. Because remember, they drafted him first, and then they cut him. He went to the Texans, then he came back, they signed him, and then he became a free agent, then they re-signed him. So this is his third stint with the Ravens. They also brought back Tony Jefferson. And he is on his third stint with the Ravens as well. Because they signed him back in, ooh, was it 2018? I don't even remember what year it was. Maybe 2017? 2016? I don't even remember. But they signed him back some years ago. He was with the Ravens for a couple years. Good vibe. Everybody loved him. Uh, then he got hurt. Then the Ravens were like, hey, ah, we love you, but you know, how, you know the business. It was no hard feelings. It was all love. Even, I think even after he got released, they still had him on one of those, um, those pre-game videos, those uh, hype videos. Even after he got released, I believe. Um, but anyway, uh, with Tony Jefferson, so yeah, they signed him, then they cut him. Then last year, toward the end of the season, they brought him back. And then he became a free agent, then they brought him back again. So this is his third stint with the Ravens, too. But... And then, of course, Ardarius Washington, even though he's expected to be more of a corner, but we'll see how it works out. But also, again, we brought up Brandon Stevens earlier. Um, he's somebody that also plays safety last year for the Ravens. So they have a lot of flexibility there. They have a lot of depth, and they have, again, a lot of quality depth. A lot of quality depth. Every single one of their safeties, minus Kyle Hamilton in the NFL, but... Every single one of their safeties who's not a rookie has starting experience in the NFL. Oh wow, perfect timing with the watch going off. But uh, Chuck Clark, Marcus Williams, Tony Jefferson, Brandon Stevens, and Geno Stone. All of them have starting experience. 
And when you have guys that have starting experience, if they need to be thrust into the starting spotlight, then it, it, it's less pressure on them because, hey, act like you've been here before. Well, we have been here before because we've started before in the league. So that's a good situation to be in. And again, that's why I would prefer that they keep Chuck Clark. Just so, again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Even if you are more than prepared at the safety position. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Guys get nicked up. Guys get bruised up, banged up and whatnot. It happens. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And Ravens right now, their secondary, it is ready. Now we know that secondary every year, they get tested like crazy. And without fail, they get tested like crazy. Um, so we'll see what this year brings. Uh, we'll see what happens with this year. But right now where the Ravens are sitting at, I'm, I'm not mad at all. And with them being ranked the number one uh, secondary uh, in the league, then I, I got no problem with that at all. At all. Because why wouldn't they be? It just, to me, it just makes sense. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.